Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful the way you describe that because because witnessing and observing the thoughts is it's very <laughs> typical of meditation, and yet the the self inquiry, very much like uh, Ramana Maharshi's path of, of looking who is the I, you know, going deeper into that, I I really feel like that is the the pathway inward to that stillness is through that inquiry, because um, because these unconscious beliefs are just assumptions that are assumed to be real, and all of them involve the identity. Uh, we could say the ego or the small self, the small I. And when people have asked me, you know, what was your pathway? I think early on I just began to to question everything. I just felt like there were assumptions that were running my life, that were just unconscious conditioning, and I, I wasn't even fully aware of what that all was, but I began to ask a lot of questions. Initially I asked the questions about the world, just didn't accept, you know, given answers. I just started to explore and investigate. I had a curiosity and ended up spending 10 years in university with that curiosity full time. But actually, at some point during those 10 years, I just started to aim those questions inward into looking at what was going on in my consciousness. When I had feelings and emotions, I just didn't stop with that. I really felt there was something underneath those emotions. And when I came into A Course in Miracles, I was directed, yes indeed, that my perceptions of the world and the people and events and circumstances, underneath those faulty perceptions were some core emotions, basically based in fear. And then underneath that fear there was, you could say, cognition, or there were thoughts that were there that, that are often watched uh, as part of meditation. And I use the analogy oftentimes of like a, an aquarium of watching the bubbles. But you really, in order to get down to the stillness, you have to get down to the pump <laughs> where the bubbles are coming from. And to me that's very symbolic of the of the belief system. And if I had to summarize what that belief system is, it's, it's linear time is at the bottom of, of all conflicts, all relationship conflicts, conflicts with the environment, just disturbing thoughts and disturbing emotions, it's different kind of states of mind that come up. There's this belief in linear time that's the root of it all, that was invented by the ego. It's a, it's a total fabrication made to cover over the present moment. And it's, it's quite ingenious and it's quite sneaky. And until you get way down and really are able to like surrender into that presence that dissolves away the linearity, then, then those streams of thoughts just keep coming and coming. So early on, you know, I, I was questioning, I was asked by my intuitive guide, you know, to question career, and I, it, it was like piecemeal, one step at a time. I, I mean, I wasn't ready to question the, the belief in, in work or a job, but I was able to start with career, stringing the, the jobs together in such a linear uh, path. And little by little, I, I just, almost intuitively began this inquiry and questioning. And then when I came to A Course in Miracles, it was a very systematic way of, of going through this questioning. In fact, in, in the Course, Jesus says, to learn this Course requires willingness to question every value that you hold, and not one can be kept hidden or it will obscure your learning. So I would say that just the mind training aspects, the workbook of the Course in Miracles, with its 365 lessons, are part of this deep inquiry that's going on, kind of by the master psychologist uh, guiding the mind down in a, almost like if you were 
or peeling the onion with a very sharp knife and just carving and slicing away layers upon layers, that's been the pathway that I've taken. And um, what takes the place of all these beliefs is the guidance, is this intuitive wisdom that comes. So instead of pursuing self-concept goals, ego goals, to try to attain and achieve things, it's more of an unlearning, it's more of a dismantling, an unraveling, an unwinding uh, that has been my experience over the years. And uh, during the experience, the ego was judging it and was very uncomfortable, as if it was being dismantled uh, in the process. And so it was judging the, the process. But I became better and better at just stepping back from those thoughts and unplugging from those thoughts and, and just being able to sink deeper and deeper beyond them all. And had what I would say many, many miraculous experiences which just showed me that everything was happening just beautifully, I was perfectly taken care of, I was safe, uh, there was no need for distress, there was no need for worry and concern that I could really just relax into that process and let it uh, reach its completion, you know, which was a complete dissolving of everything. Took all opinions about everything, you know, just to, it's more of the I do not know state of mind, which is just a, a symbol of an open mind.